this whole Puff Daddy situation in which I have created a celebrity junk video that will come out in the next two days has really taken me aback because Puff Daddy did not want Lizzo twerking on his Instagram Easter live stream, but then allowing Drea to do so. And I'll cover the whole breakdown on my channel when the video is edited. But I want to talk about successful black men. And Puff Daddy, or P. Diddy, is at the top. He's worth over, I believe, at least a half a billion dollars or more. Very successful, super hard worker. Done many things in his life that for some of us it would take us five or six lifetimes to achieve. And in any other community, when you have achieved that kind of money, you're able to speak your mind a little bit more freely, like a Donald Trump white man can do this. Um, you know, other powerful men of other cultures can just pretty much keep it real when they have that kind of money. But when the black man is successful, there is a lot of clarifying things or hiding things or masking things that he actually wants to say but cannot say it. And he must give an excuse or an account for what he does like and why he doesn't like it. Now, I want you to stay right there because I'm going to go back to black women when they are successful. When black women, and they are successful and they have money, they are allowed to say whatever they want. We don't want no ugly dudes. We don't want no fat dudes. Um, we want all muscular dudes. We want six foot seven dudes with 40 inch verticals with PhDs and biochemistry. That's all that we want. Even the ones that don't have no money can say this. But when you are a black man like Puff Daddy and or P. Diddy and Lizzo wants to come and twerk on your live stream, you can't necessarily come out and say, you're gross looking, so I don't want you to twerk on my Easter live stream. But then you have to be more creative, and then you have to speak in code, okay? Now, let's talk about speaking in code, because you're going to wonder why Brother O'Shea, what do you what do you mean when you say speaking in code? What does that what does that what does that mean to me? Can you explain that? Can you break that down? Can you make that very empirical for me? And I'm glad you asked that question because I certainly can. One day I was in Poland, Warsaw, Poland. Me and a good friend of mine's name Abraham. Now this was in 2016. We went to Warsaw for the weekend. And there was a hip hop club that we were trying to go to. And the club was popping. It was, you know, because the city that we were living in, there wasn't no good hip hop clubs or anything like that. And we went to Warsaw and we went into the line. And the guy didn't want anybody black to come into the club. But he can't tell us that we can't come in because we're black. OK, so what does he have to do? He has to make up an excuse to hide the real reason why he doesn't want us in. So what he tells us is, it's a private party. So we're astonished because we can't get in. We're both U.S. citizens. And I know that all the other two or 300 people are not there hanging out as a private party. So we see another black guy who was an African, but he's from London and he's married to a Polish girl and her friend is there. And then we tell them what's going on. Hey, bro, you're black. They're probably going to let you in the club. This is, um, and that's BS. So his wife speaks Polish and the other girl's Polish. So they get, we get back in line, all of us. So the white girl, so, so me and the guys get back in line. He says, you three black guys, you know, you can't get in the club. The Polish girl starts speaking to Polish. This is my husband. Yes, this is, he can get in. Stop playing or we're going to call the authorities that you're being racist. So this is okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll let your black husband in the club, but these two guys can't get in. Why can't he get, can they get in? Oh, they're too old. So he was forced at the one black guy in, but he couldn't let us get in because we were too old. Okay, now why am I telling you this retarded story? Thank you, thank you for listening, right? 
The reason why I'm telling you is because black men have to also speak in code when they're successful. So if there's a woman that looks like Lizzo and you are beating down the block on black men as to why they don't want her, uh, a Lizzo on the platform, but they want a beautiful lady like Drea on the platform and she's able to twerk or dance and nobody says anything, but Lizzo cannot. Then what we tell Lizzo is Lizzo it's Easter. This is a family friendly show. We, you know, we have children watching this. So we can't allow you to do that. Now, to Lizzo, it does seem like that's what it is. It's Easter Sunday. It's family friendly. We don't, there are kids watching, so we don't want people to see that. Not on the platform, Lizzo. We hope that you understand. And Lizzo, you have no choice but to go with it because that sounds true. But then once Lizzo leaves and the girl that we want comes in, like Drea, all of a sudden, when she starts twerking, we'll let it go on or we won't say anything about it because we not, we're not in the room. I mean, this is what this is what happens. So, and, and then for the woman that we really want or interested in, we don't, we don't care. And, and it's no different from what women do. Because, see, I saw a lot of women complaining about this whole idea about, you know, P. Diddy not giving equal rights to Lizzo and not giving equal rights, but giving that equal right to Drea. You know, it's always somebody complaining about how a brother runs his platform. So what a sister will tell an ugly guy, let's use me, for example. People say I'm ugly. I'll use myself. They will say, you know what? I would like to date you. But I think we're better off as friends. Or, it's not you, it's me. She doesn't want to tell me that I'm but ugly and I got a receding hairline and my, and my breath probably smell like 75-year-old whiskey. She's not going to tell me that, okay? Because she doesn't want to be rude. She's going to tell me that she's not talking to anybody right now. She just wants to be single. She's living her best life. While she's telling me all these things, she's already in a bed with another dude that she really wants. And while she's taking 45 minutes to return my text message, she's begging for some guy to call her back that she wants to be with. But see, the problem is when women do that, it's not a problem. But if successful black men do that, it's a problem. So then here's a solution to that problem. Since feminism is so strong, and since the other things are so strong, it's not a problem. What we will continue to do is we'll speak in code so that you can't decode what we're trying to say. So for all of the things in the black community that you guys get mad if we do say something about it, we tell the truth, we'll just keep it in code. You know, like when black men don't want to come back to the black community and give back, what we'll say instead of, instead of dealing with that is, you know, there's a lot of potential in the black community, in the black, in the black uh, America, and black women are doing a really good job as it is. I don't think I could do much better than what those sisters are doing right now. What that sounded like, it sounded very nice. It sounded uplifting. It sounded like something that you wanted to hear because if you're a woman that, does, that, that has children and you live in the black community, you live in East St. Louis, you live in uh, East Oakland, you live in North or Southwest Philadelphia, you know, you live in Southeast DC, you live in the, in the Drew Hill District of Baltimore. You live in there. This is something you want to hear. But what the brother just told you is there's no way I'm wasting my time to come out there and deal with you Negroes because I'm over here and I'm not going back there. But because we know that we can't say that, let's decode the message so that you don't get offended and then you don't cry and try to get us fired from the job. So we'll just say it. So instead of saying things like, oh, my God, you know, she's too big for me or she's too overweight. What we'll say is, you know, 
Somebody intelligent like her, I don't deserve. I really need to get my act together to be able to get with a beautiful black queen like you. That's really what I want to do. I mean, I really need to work up to that level. You are somebody I just don't deserve right now. And you know what? I need to bring more to the table. I mean, I know that I have a, a medical doctor degree. I have a law degree. But, you know, I think you deserve more than all of that. And I'm just not there yet. That's simply what's the puff that he did. He decoded the language. And don't think that a lot of other black men are not going to follow suit. Because, see, at, the, at this point, it doesn't pay to come out and tell the truth. For what? You're going to get slandered. You're going to get hit with hate speech. You're going to get hit with all this and lose your job. No, let's not do that. Let's not offend people that are unattractive or whatever. You know, we'll come with, with, with great compliments like, oh, no, Lizzo, there was no disrespect. Lizzo was one of the greatest twerkers in the world. Right? So there's no problem. But, guys, what do you think, man? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Make sure that you guys subscribe. If you're a black man and you're new to my channel or you just want to check my channel out, subscribe and hit the bell, right? We want all the brothers out there in black America, our black, pe black brothers all around the world, subscribe to my channel. I want you to be here. This is the place for you. Um, all the other people there, thank you for being here. Hit the bell, subscribe. All my contact information is at the beginning of the video, pinned to the top. If you are a brother and you want to support me on Patreon and my website, negromanosphere.com, where we blog about the best issues, the greatest issues in black America for black American men, click on the link, check out our articles, um, check out the Black Men Are Perfect t-shirts and my Teespring spore. And as you know, the buffoonery remains at an all-time high. I'm out.